All right, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to go ahead and save the access and refresh token uh, to the database because we're going to actually need the access token for later use. And there's no way that we can get it again unless the user re-authenticates. So we're going to have to save it to the database. The reason why we need the access token is because it's going to allow us to uh, make requests to the Discord API on behalf of the authenticated user. And the reason why we need to do that is because we're going to need to get all of the guilds, the updated guilds that the user is in. The reason why we can't just use the guilds that are given to us when the user authenticates for the first time is because the user uh, can leave a guild or leave several guilds and we would not have the updated guilds. The only way we can get the updated guilds is by fetching the API. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go inside the user entity and we're going to go ahead and just add two columns. So we're going to add one for the access token and we're going to add one for the refresh token. And remember, we're saving this to the database. Now, I would suggest uh, on for, for, for you guys, I would suggest you to encrypt and to encrypt the access token and the refresh token when you save it to the database. For this video, I'm not going to do it. But I would highly suggest uh, you do that for your implementation. So that way you can avoid having uh, these secrets just saved in the database raw. It's very easy to do, but I'm not going to do that because I, I was actually trying to do that, but I had some issues with the crypto library, crypto GS library. So I'll just leave it to you guys to take care of that. Okay. So we have our access token and refresh token uh, fields for our entity. If I go into the database right now, and if I uh, describe users table, you can see that we have those two uh, columns uh, synchronized properly with the database. That's the power of type ORM. What we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and go into the Discord strategy file. Okay, so inside your Discord strategy file, this is where we get the access and the refresh token. Okay, the access token and refresh token, we're going to save that to the database, but we're just, but because we added that to the user entity, we're going to save it alongside with the user entity as well. So what we're going to do is inside the validate user method, we're actually going to need to pass that in, but we can't pass it in right now because validate user has a strict type, it only takes in user details. So we're gonna to have to modify this a little bit. We're gonna modify user details to take in an access token as well as a refresh token. Okay, so now all we gotta do is just pass that in. Access token, refresh token. When we call validate user now, user details is going to have the Discord ID, the access token, as well as the refresh token. So right now, if we look at this logic, we can see that it's still the same thing. We have not modified valid user, okay? The only problem here is that if the user has already been logged in, it will not save the access and refresh token to the database, and I'll show you. So let's say, for example, if I select all users, you can see that access and refresh token are currently null. Or actually, let me do this real quick. I'm going to go over here and I'll set nullable to true. Okay. Well, technically, it shouldn't be null. Actually, yeah, I'm going to remove that. It shouldn't be null. But let me go ahead and show you what happens right now if I try to re-log in. If I re-log in, you're going to see that in the database, nothing happens. And the reason why is because when we call validate user, it's going to go ahead and search for a user. If the user was found, then it'll return the original user because we were already logged in. Because we were already logged in, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't bother to create a new user because we already had a user already. Now, because we already had an account uh, registered in the database, it just returned the original user. If there were, if the user was not already signed up, then it would call create user and it would create the user 
without any problems and it would actually have the access and refresh token saved. In order to fix this, what we can do is we can create a method to update the user every single time, no matter what. So we'll, we'll only update the user if the user was found. Okay. And actually the reason why we want to do this is because, um, let's say for example, it, it's safe to assume that every new user that signs up will always be given access and refresh token. And this would only affect people who were signed up, but did not have an access and refresh token already. However, the access and refresh token will always update. Let's say, for example, if the access token, the access token expires, well, you're going to need to update it at some point with the refresh token. Let's say, for example, if the user re-authenticates again while the access token expired, then it's going to generate a new access and refresh token. Let's say, for example, if the user uh, revokes the access token and the refresh token, and if they authenticate with your application again, that's also going to generate a new pair as well. So knowing all of these different uh, scenarios, we need to make sure we actually update the access and refresh token every single time whenever the user logs in, even if they will be the same. Because like I said, there, there, there are times where they will be the same, but there are times where they will be different. And we need to make sure we have the latest valid access and refresh token. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the user service.ts class and we're going to go into the I user service interface. Okay. And if you're using VS code, you can just right click and click and go to definition. Okay. And we're going to just create a method called update user. Now this update user method is going to be responsible for just literally updating the users, uh, users details. Now we only want to update certain things such as the access token as well as the refresh token. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm just going to specify this to return a, a user. Okay, and what we're going to do next is we're just going to go ahead and pass in a couple of parameters into update user. Well, we're going to pass in one, but we're only going to pass in the access token and the refresh token. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new, uh, a new type called update user Oh, uh, actually, no, I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. Actually, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to reuse the details right over here. So we're going to take that in. And what we want to do is we want to call, um, this dot user repository dot update. And essentially what we want to do is we want to update the user given the discord ID. Okay, so, um, or actually, will we actually know I have a better idea, actually. Here's what we're going to do. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and do this. Um, for the user service, for update user, we're going to take in two parameters instead. We're going to take in user and user details. Okay user and user details like this okay so that way uh we can actually just easily do this i'll show you let me just write a quick console log we'll do return this dot user repository dot save the reason why i'm using save instead of dot update is because dot save will actually return the actual user entity if you use the update, it'll not return the user entity, but return a different, uh, a different object. And we don't want that. So for save, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and destructure all of the values of user. Okay. And user details. So, uh, actually I think it's a better idea if we actually create a new type. Because I really don't want to include properties that should never update, like the Discord ID. So I'll just go ahead and leave the access and refresh token like this. It's going to make our code a little bit more uglier, but I'm willing to do this instead of reusing user details. Because it doesn't really make much sense. So let's go ahead and go inside our interface and update the types. So we're going to, uh, we're going to import update user details right over here. And we're going to go ahead and import that right over here. Okay. So now 
details is only going to ever have access and refresh token. If we want to add other stuff too that changes over time, like the username or the discriminator, we can also do that as well. But I'll leave that for you all to do that. Well, these structure details. Okay. So this will literally destructure all of the default or all of the current values of the user, including the actual ID. And this will go ahead and give us the actual new values. And all we got to do now is just call update user. So what we can do is we want to make sure we check to see if the user is truthy, because if the user is found, which means the user is truthy, that means we will call up the user. If the user is not found, aka the value of user variable is undefined, then we'll call create user. So instead of using this or operator, we'll actually just use a ternary operator. So if the user is found, we'll go ahead and call update user like this, and we'll pass in the necessary parameters. We'll pass in user, and we'll pass in. I think we. Sh I think maybe we can actually pass in details like this. Uh, yeah, we can actually pass in details like that, though there might be problems with the Discord ID. So I think I'm not going to do that. And I'll just pass, I'll just pass in the access token. I mean, I could also actually, I can actually do this as well. I could actually do this. Um, Let me see. Yeah, so let me do this. Uh, yeah, let me do this instead. So what I'm doing is from user details, I'm going to go ahead and only get the access token and refresh token. That's going to be packed into updated details. And I'm just going to take this card ID like that. The reason why I'm doing this is because I just want to be able to pass in a variable just like that without without having to worry about um without having to worry about passing in the Discord ID. I don't really like this uh this problem, but it's fine. I, I like I prefer it this way. So once again to go over this, what we're doing here is we're using object destructuring. So first we're destructuring Discord ID from details, okay, and then what we're doing here is we're using the spreader operator to pretty much take all of the additional values from details and then pack it, packing it into updated details. So updated details is only going to have access token and refresh token. So this is a neat trick to kind of like remove a property from an object. Not really remove, but like create a new object that has a new that has new properties that you do not want. Okay. Um, so if we go into, or actually let me rephrase that, it will have properties that you wanted to get rid of, but it won't actually uh, mutate the original object. Anyways, so now inside update user, it's going to take in updated details. And you can see over here, it will just uh, return the saved user. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out now. So right now, if I go into my database, you can see that access and refresh token are not there. However, if I go ahead and reauthorize, Hopefully nothing happens. Hopefully nothing bad goes wrong. You can see that everything went right. And let's double check. You can see now it actually updated. Uh, it actually updated everything. If I want to go ahead and save the username, I can actually do that. And I'll also save the discriminator as well. The discriminator is a string, not a number. It's a numeric string rather. Okay, so what I can do is now details, we can we can update user details now. So let's go into types. Uh, user details will not have username as well as discriminator. And then for update user details, we can include these two as well. Okay, so now in order to actually have this get updated, what we can do is we can just, first let's, uh, inside valid user, we need to actually pass in the username and the discriminator. Okay, now that we're passing in the updated uh, the updated values, uh, user details is going to have uh, the username and discriminator now. We're going to search for the user. If the user is found, we're going to update the user. 
And it makes sense to always update the user if the user is found because username is going to change at some point if the user decides to change it. The discriminator, discriminator might change if the user has Discord Nitro and they change their discriminator. Um, you can also save the avatar too. Okay. But this only makes sense to, it only makes sense to do this if you actually have values that you necessarily need that always changes. Okay. So every single time we find the user, we'll update it. If the user is not registered in our database, we don't update. We just create the user. Okay. So right now, if we go to update user, you can see because we are using object destructure, what happens here is this will literally spread all of the original properties. Okay. And then these new updated properties will override the original ones. Okay. So now if I go into my database, you can see that we have username and discriminator. They are empty. However, if I re-log in, it is no longer empty. Right over there. Uh, discriminator, that's incorrect. Uh, let me fix that real quick. I did. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. Don't save the guilds, though, because the guilds is always going to be stale data because the, the user can get kicked from a guild, banned from a guild, or they can leave a guild at some point. So do not save the guilds. Because... The only time these values will be updated is if the user re-logs in. So even if, so let so so even if, let's say for example, uh, you're updating the values whenever they re-log in, even if you're doing that, it still doesn't really matter because the only time they'll actually see it reflect uh, on the dashboard, for example, is if they re-authenticate. So it's actually a lot better to just literally fetch the Discord endpoint to get the to get the username discriminator, the guilds, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't really make much sense to save it, but we'll we'll leave it alone like this for now. Okay, so let's do one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and delete from users. So you're gonna see we have an empty set of users, right? Now, every single time, whenever a new user signs up, it'll just create a new record for them like that. Simple. Okay, and you can see the access token and refresh token are the same. And we can now, anywhere in our application, we can get the user's access and refresh token, and we can make requests on behalf of them to the Discord API. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just show you all, uh, like I'm gonna give you like a brief mini tutorial on how to make API calls to the Discord server. We're gonna do that using, or not Discord server, use, to the Discord, a, to Discord API. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna do that using Postman. And then once, uh, we get the hang of that. I'll show you how to um, do that in the code base. Okay. And the reason why we're doing this is because uh, this is going to allow us to set us up to get all of the mutual guilds that both the user and the bot are both in, as well as the guilds that the user are admins of. Okay. So I'll explain a little bit, a little bit more about that later on, because it's going to be important that we do that because we need it for the menu page. Okay. But this is just pretty much like the build up to that part of the episode. So I'll see you all in my next episode. Peace out.